And everybody said, Amen. I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that you'll be strong, you'll be attentive, and the word will prosper in your life, in your family, in your ministry, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for the joy of serving you. Thank you for the liberty we have, that there's no restriction, that we can serve you the way you have shown us and revealed in the scriptures. Lord, we pray that this privilege will not be taken away from any of us in Jesus' name. Open the pages of the scriptures to us today. Help us to remember what we might be forgetting and help us to have inscribed, reaching upon the table of every heart what you desire, what you demand, what you command in Jesus' name. Bless us in the word and use us to bless multitudes who are waiting for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Today we're coming to Genesis chapter 35. And we're reading from verse 1. Genesis chapter 35 verse 1. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou Ledest from the face of Esau thy brother. That verse summarizes everything we have in this chapter. And the topic tonight is return, renew your life and ministry at Bethel. Return, renew your life and ministry at Bethel. The three points we're looking at, number one, divine call to earlier spiritual experiences. Jacob had experiences with the Lord, interaction with the Lord, and there was the evidence of that in his life at Bethel. He's gone far away from the experiences at Bethel, and the Lord called him return divine call to earlier spiritual experiences number two demanded condition an explicit submissive expression he was not to return alone now when he was at Bethel many years before he alone was there. He wasn't married. He was going to Laban. Now he's gone there. Many years have passed. And now he's married, having children, having cattle, and having quite a lot of property. And now he's not to return alone and leave his family behind. So he had to give the condition, his demanded condition, an explicit submissive expression. Number three, double confirmation of exceptional supernatural enlargement. The Lord had given him the promise before. And now the Lord said that again, renewed what he had been given before, double confirmation of exceptional supernatural enlightenment. Look at number one. Number one, divine call to earlier spiritual experiences. In Genesis chapter 35 verse 1, and God said unto Jacob, God said unto Jacob, you must know what God says to you as we come and learn, as we come and read the Bible together, as we come and the Lord exposes and expands and expounds the word of God to us. The word of God comes to everyone, but you must know what the Lord is telling you in particular. And God said unto Jacob, 
arise go up to Bethel and dwell there then it says and make there an altar the Lord gave him express command make thee an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fledest from the face of Esau thy brother three things we're looking at here number one divine call return to the God of Bethel number two direct commandment remember the God of all blessings number three definite commitment remain with God dwell there remain with God as a true believer and we as true believers will remain number one number one divine call return to the God of Bethel look at Genesis chapter 31 verse 13 in 31 verse 13 I am the God of Bethel God made it very clear it's the God that appeared to you at Bethel it's the God above that ladder that you saw angels coming up and going down and going on that ladder I am the God of Bethel that spoke to you definitely at Bethel and I told you I will be with you I will go with you I will not leave you until I have done everything I promised you I've done that now where are you come back to Bethel here the Lord said I am the God of Bethel where thou anointest the pillar where thou vowed a vow unto me now arise get thee out of this land and return unto the land of thy kindred look at verse uh, chapter 28 reading from verse 11 and he lighted upon a certain place and he tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and laid down in that place to sleep verse 12 and he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it verse 13 and behold the Lord stood above it and said I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father the God of Isaac the land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Here is where God met him. And he had a personal encounter with the Lord. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. The same promise the Lord had given to Abraham and to Isaac. Here, at this personal encounter with God, God gave to Jacob. And he says, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in thee. And in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The blessing of salvation, the blessing of redemption was to come through the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and uh, Jacob. And the Lord assured him at Bethel, that's the importance of Bethel for him, where God met him in verse 15, and behold, I am with thee. What else would he want? The blessing of Bethel assured him that divine provision and divine protection will be upon him. I will be with thee, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. The intention of God 
the promise of God, the plan of God, I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. I will not leave thee, I'm going to be with you, until I have finished, finalized everything I promise you. Verse 16, it says, And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And then he gave promises to God what he was now going to do. Let's come to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 2. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 2, and shall return unto the Lord thy God. Divine call, return. And you will return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. And in verse 6, for that to be possible, the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. And the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. It's not just a physical journey to return to Bethel. It's to return to the God of Bethel with all his heart, all his soul, all his mind. And his heart is to be circumcised, sanctified and purified clinging to the Lord all the days of his life. Let's look at number two here. Number two, direct commandment. Remember the God of all blessings. Remember the God of all blessings. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. But thou shalt remember. As God was calling Jacob back to Bethel, he was calling him to remember what he was before Bethel, what he became at Bethel, and what happened after Bethel. And then to remember everything he got now, he got from the God of Bethel. Think about it in your life, what you were before Bethel, what you were before your first encounter with the Lord, what you were before your salvation, what you became at salvation, and what God has done, uncountable things God has done after that salvation, return. That's the commandment of the Lord. Remember what he has done, it says, and thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which is swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. If when you apply that to Jacob, he looked at himself, the wealth he got. Look at Genesis chapter 32, reading from verse 9. It says, And Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and will deal, I will deal with well with thee. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. He was remembering now what was he before he encountered God at Bethel. The truth he had the angels he saw, the ladder that he saw, and the definite conviction there is heaven. And then God up in heaven speaking directly to him. All that he did not know before he got to Bethel, he now knew. He said, of the truth that you have revealed unto me, for with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now... I am become 
two bands. That's what the Lord is calling us to remember. He wants us to remember what he has done for us since we met him at the Bethel experience. He tells us in Revelation chapter 2, reading from verse 4, it says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. You know, Jacob settling in Shechem. God adds something against him. Jacob, not going all the way through back to Bethel, where God wanted him to be, God had something against him. And we who are living today, the place where we are, not the place of Bethel, not the place of our first experience with the Lord, not the place of total, complete surrender unto the Lord, not the place of explicit obedience unto the Lord. He has something against us. He says, because thou hast left thy first love. Many things have come in, experiences, encounters, encumbrances had come in and now is forced devotion is forced consecration is forced vow when he met the lord at bethel all those things that faded away and when we think about ourselves praise the lord for those of us who are standing but then if you look at all the consecrations you had made since you became born again if you look at all the vows you had made since you were born again if you look at all the things you had said with your mouth before the lord in prayer what you will do what you will be how you will live if you look at everything you have promised the lord since the time of your bethel and you look at yourself today we are not where we should have been and so verse 5 in verse 5 it says remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first work so else i will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of its place except thou repent the lord is telling us to repent and come back we will come back to where the lord wants us to be spiritually wholeheartedly with all our heart all our soul all our mind the same fire that burnt years before and the same love that flowed from our hearts years before and the same conviction consecration that we had years before we are coming back to those bethel experiences in jesus name look at number three here number three here definite commitment remain with the god with god as true believers it tells us in chapter 31 verse 3 of genesis and the lord said unto jacob return unto the land of thy fathers to the and to thy kindred and i will be with you my presence with you you must not take for granted if you return you return to the god of bethel and to return to the bethel of god then i will be with thee look at verse uh, 13 in verse 13 i am the god of bethel where thou anointest the pillar and where thou vows a vow unto me now arise get thee out of this land and return 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 unto the land of thy kindred we're looking at chapter 32 and we're looking at verse 27 and he said unto him what is thy name and he said jacob then in verse 28 it says he said thy name shall be called no more jacob but israel for as a prince thou hast power with god as a prince thou hast power with god and with men and as prevailed uh, jacob must be asking himself as all those things uh, happened uh, in chapter 33 and chapter 34 before coming to chapter 35 where is the power that he had with god where is the power that he had 
with men. And where is the prevailing influence he had when God spoke to him that as a prince, you now have power with God and with men and has prevailed. We must be asking ourselves. Let me help you when I say asking ourselves. Look at the time between the time you were converted, the period, until this time. When is the peak of your relationship with God? When you knew that you knew that you knew you were at the highest point of your intimacy with God, power with God, assurance in God that you could move any mountain, no fear, no backward looking, your conviction was high, your consecration was high, and your communication with God was high. What was the time when you had that peak experience? That's what the Lord is talking about, Jacob. You had the peak experience when you had power with God, and when you had power with men, and when you prevailed come back to that experience look at look at this in verse 30 in verse 30 it says and jacob called the name of the place peniel for i have seen god face to face now jacob as we look at chapter 34 could he say I've seen God, I'm seeing God face to face. He said, Simeon and Levi, you have troubled me. Now, all the people that surround me, they will rise up and then they will destroy me and my family. He wasn't seeing God face to face at that time. The Lord said, come back. The commitment we have that we have to make is that we return we renew our lives and we remain with the God of true believers. Look at John chapter 1, chapter 15, reading from verse 1. John 15, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4, it tells us, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you are Abide in me. That's our Bethel. Abide, dwell there. Jacob, and then he tells us, dwell there. Abide there. Abide in him. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Verse 7. In verse 7, he tells us, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask whatsoever what she will and it shall be done unto you you missed an amen there let's come to point number two now point number two we're looking at demanded condition and explicit submissive expression look at it in genesis chapter 35 verse 2 then jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments now before the lord talked to him at this time jacob he knew a lot, but he said little. He knew that the members of the family had strange gods. He knew that they had unclean habits. He knew that they had garments that were not really suitable for the presence of God. But he never said anything. He didn't speak. How many times in our lives we have become uh, so coward, conquered, 
that we cannot talk and we do not speak anymore. We know a lot of things around us. A lot of things in our congregation as ministers. A lot of things in our family as members of the family. But we have come to now just be quiet. We ourselves were not at Bethel. And the members of our family, they are not really at Bethel. And the members of our congregation, they are not at Bethel. And we keep quiet now. God called Jacob. And God said, Arise, go up, dwell there. And now, in response to that, he spoke to the household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean and change your garments. Look at verse 3 there. In verse 3, and let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, and they, without any restraint and without any um, kind of rejection of what he was saying, they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods not just one item, not just one piece. This one ad, that one ad, that one ad, and he gave all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears. Now, Jacob did not mention earrings, but they knew in their heart they had made idols and gods of those earrings and in sincerity in faithfulness to respond to Jacob even though Jacob did not mention it they said really this has become an idol to us so we can look like the nations around us and look like the shaky minds and look like all the other people were brought in this and we know even though Jacob did not mention that we know this has become an idol and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem, which was by Shechem. Now, Jacob did not get them and sell them to the Shechemites. But you know, those Shechemites had all died. But the women were still alive because they spared the women. They didn't give those earrings to the women. They didn't say, I cannot drink, but how can I destroy all these bottles of beer? I'll sell and get money. They didn't do that. I cannot smoke this anymore, but I have packets of them. So I will sell them to do so want to be poisoned and then I will get money. They didn't do that. They gave up everything. And then it says, and Jacob hid them under the oak, which was by Shechem. And then in verse 5, in verse 5, and they journeyed. If they had done all that and they remained where they were, they'll not be at the center of the will of God. After they gave up the strange gods, they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them and did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, practical conviction of returnees to Bethel. Number two, particular consideration in response to his beckoning. And then number three, peculiar constraint and restraint of the barbaric. Look at number one. Number one, practical conviction of returnees to Bethel. We're looking at chapter 35, reading from verse 2. Jacob said to his household, and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among, that are among you, 
and be clean and change your garments. Reading from verse 3 now. In verse 3 it says, And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there, I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress. And he was and was with me in uh, all the way which I went. Joshua chapter 24, reading from verse 18. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 18, and the Lord, and the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore, will we also serve the Lord? For he is our God. Verse 19. In verse 19, Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord. For he is a holy God and holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Verse 20. In verse 20, and if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods strange gods then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he has done you good now understand this was the last chapter of joshua and it was near the time joshua was going to die and now he had the courage and the boldness maybe the courage and boldness he had not manifested all this time after all he was going to die now what could he fear and what could happen to him look at verse 21 in verse 21 the people said unto joshua nay but we will serve the Lord. Verse 22, it says, And Joshua said unto them, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, Now therefore, put away, saith he, strange, the strange gods which are among you and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. Can you imagine? We're coming from chapter 1 of Joshua where God said, every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon I will give unto you. We're coming to chapter 2 where the Canaanites were afraid of the people of Israel because they had heard what God had done with them. Can you imagine chapter 3? Sanctify yourselves because tomorrow you'll do wonders among you. Can you imagine chapters 4 and Five when they passed over Jordan and when they circumcised themselves. Can you imagine when they went around Jericho and the walls fell down flat? And yet, somehow, somewhere, strange gods came into their midst. You know, in our Christian lives, we need to be watchful every time. Crusades going on, sinners getting saved, the sick getting healed, miracles multiplying. And yet, we need to watch the strange God somehow, somewhere will not enter into our hearts, into our families. And now, this last chapter that Joshua was talking to the children of Israel. He said, okay, you want to serve God? I told you, you cannot serve God because I know what's in your hand. I know what's in your family. They say, yes, we're going to serve God. All right. If you're going to serve God now, therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you and incline your heart unto the Lord, the God of God. Israel. For Samuel chapter 7, we're looking at verse 3. In First Samuel chapter 7, verse 3, and Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods, Samuel. Talking to them now, Eli was the leader. 
the high priest. And Samuel was like a trainee, just a worker coming from behind. He saw what Ufna and Phineas were doing. He couldn't talk. He was just a little boy. He saw the negligence of Eli. He couldn't talk. He was just a little, but he knew, he knew there were strange gods among the people. And now Eli is gone. Ufnai Phinehas gone. And the Lord has raised him up now. He is the mouthpiece of God now. Now that he is there, he could talk. When God brings you into leadership, the things you meet on ground and the things you see on ground, you will not just keep quiet and say, well, that's what it had been if I want to be an acceptable leader before the people and they have been having all these strange gods and strange garments before I came. Who am I to not be pointing out this and that? They might reject me and throw me away. No not Samuel. Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him, serve him, serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, then the children of Israel put away Berlin and Ashtaroth, and serve the Lord only. I pray your ministry will have impact. But you know, if you are just preaching and preaching, and then you go through the Bible, but the people do not know specifically what they are to abandon, what they are to repent of, and you preach smooth, and you preach good, and you preach Bible, but it's, it doesn't bring conviction to anyone. It doesn't bring conversion to anyone, and the people continue in their habits, in their lifestyles, with the strange God that God does not approve of that's a wasted ministry that's a wasted skill but when Samuel spoke to them then the children of Israel put away the Baalim and the Asherah and they served the Lord only let's look at number two there number two there particular consideration in response to his beckoning. We're coming back to Genesis chapter 35, reading from verse 4. It says, And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by shaking. He knew he wasn't coming back to that place again. He was going to um, bury those things out of sight, out of mind, out of the family. He was going to bury them there and he would go away to Bethel. He would not return there. That's the attitude we to have if we are actually repenting of something, if we're removing something, if we have the conviction that Jacob, the head of the household, has spoken. And even things he didn't know. And we really have deep conviction within us. And we're not just doing what he said, the one that is obvious, but everything we remove from our lives and then we give unto him and Jacob himself he wasn't secretly desiring those earrings that had they have given to him he still be thinking what do I do with this and I like them and this happens to be the moment of conviction now, okay, I'll keep them so that when the fire of conviction becomes low, I'll bring them out and give it back to them. You know, some people, they love 
their wives the way they look like the world well you know some people they come to church and their wives come to church and maybe they're the people that bring their wives to the church and their daughters and their sons and they like the way their daughters and their wives look like the world and so when those daughters and when those wives when they have conviction and they said enough is enough i've been hearing of sanctification and holiness all these years and i knew that my heart really wasn't there because of the things i had which i love very much and they now say now i mean business with god I give up that, I give up that. I want to live like a daughter of Zion. Then their husbands might wisely, in quotes, talk to them. Do you really want to do this? Is it as bad as that? You know, I didn't mention that. So why are you giving up that one? And they might talk their wives and their daughters back to they give up some strange gods but the other things in their heart that is really a strange god they're still claiming to it now in exodus chapter 32 i'm reading from verse 1 exodus 32 verse 1 and when the people saw that moses delayed to come down out of the mount the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him up make us gods which shall go before us for as for this Moses the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt were well, what not what is become of it then in verse 2 in verse 2 and Aaron said unto them break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives of your sons sons of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me what the family of Jacob realized is these earrings from the way they thought and from the way they, knew, they felt they knew even though it might not be a direct idol you can make an idol out of it and whatever it is in our lives that we can make an idol of that will seize our mind that anytime we don't have that thing we'll think we're not complete that how can i go out as a lady how can i go out as a woman how can i go out as i am you know a, an, a, an a executive woman and then i don't have this and that and that thing becomes an idol in the heart that's the thing you will know by yourself you will tell by yourself they were able to make idol out of those earrings look at verse 3 in verse 3 and all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron in verse 4 it says and you receive them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten carver and said and they said these be thy gods what came out of those earrings became gods O Israel which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt look at Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16 Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16 moreover the Lord said moreover the Lord said moreover the Lord himself said to uh, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and they walk with fresh straight forth their necks and wanton eyes walking and missing as they go making a twinkling with their feet whatever is in any life that makes that life haughty and proud 
a pompous on top of the world that's the idol whatever it is and the lord himself now said unto the children unto the daughters of zion he said because 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 the daughters of zion are haughty he can tell and the person is haughty and proud and pompous he can tell to she can tell and they walk with straight forth next and one turn her eyes walking and missing her as they go and making a twinkling in their feet look at verse 17 therefore the lord will smite with his scab the crown of the head of the daughters of zion and the lord will discover their secret parts in verse 18 in that day the lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments look at the lord he saw that those things became idols and those things made them proud and those things made them haughty and it says the lord himself will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their cause and their brown tires like the moon in verse 19 it says and the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers verse 20 verse 20 says and the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings you see it became an idol far far away at the time of Isaiah uh, let's look at Hosea chapter 2 we're reading from verse 13 Hosea chapter 2 in verse 13 and I will visit upon her the days of Berlin wherein she burnt incense unto them and she dead herself with her hearings here is god talking now when god talks about something that means that thing is significant they had the idol and they couldn't live with those without those things and they worshipped strange gods by those things that they had and God himself said he will visit upon her the days of Berlin wherein she burnt incense to them and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels and she went after her lovers and forgot me says the Lord let's come to number three here number three peculiar constraint and restraint of the barbaric we're looking at genesis chapter 35 and we're looking at verse 5 it says in chapter 35 verse 5 and the journey and the terror of god was upon the cities that were around about them and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. They will not pursue after you. The Lord will blind, blindfold all those uh, wicked people, evil people, will blindfold them to your life in Jesus' name. When we stand firm and stand straight and live according as God wants us to live, everywhere you go, the presence of God will be with you. The protection of God will be with you. No evil shall befall you all the days of your life in, in ministry in Jesus' name. Look at Exodus chapter 23, and I'm reading from verse 22. Exodus 23, verse 22. But if thou indeed shalt obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. Look at verse 27. It says, I will send my fear before thee. You're losing your amen. I will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, and I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hevites and the Canaanites and the Hivites from before thee. The Lord is talking to you. From before you, all 
those people that thought they will hurt or harm your life, the Lord will compulsorily, with irresistible power, it will turn their back from you. They will not get to you in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three. Point number three, double confirmation of exceptional supernatural enlargement. The Lord will enlarge you. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, the saved companions conscious of conversion and newness. Number two, the second confirmation of a change of nature. Number three, the solemn commission towards a company of nations. Let's look at number one there. The saved companions conscious of conversion and newness of life. We're looking at Genesis chapter 35, reading from verse 6. So Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, and he and all the people that were with him. And then in verse 7, in verse 7, and he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. Because he obeyed the Lord, a confirmation and evidence of conversion, an evidence of newness of life has now come. Exodus chapter 34. In Exodus 34, reading from verse 3, it says, For the children of Israel, and Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord as said, we will do. All the words which the Lord had said, we will do. When the church comes to that place, to that position, where the young and the old, the men and the women, the ministers and the members, the professional and the, and the other people, everyone in the church of the living God, when we say all oh, that the Lord had said, we will do, the blessings of God will multiply in his church, in your life, in your family. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said all that the Lord had said, We will do and be obedient. And I pray the power of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, the strength of the Lord to say that and to mean that and to do that, the Lord confirm in every life in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two here, the second confirmation of a change of nature. We're looking at Genesis chapter 35, verses 9 and 10, and God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padan Aram and blessed him. The Lord will bless you. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, and God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel. And shall Israel shall be thy name, and he called his name Jacob. He had had that name before. Look at Genesis chapter 32, reading from verse 28. It says, and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. But as a prince, thou hast, thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Verse 30, in verse 30 it says, And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Now, when it says he changed his name, it's symbolic of changing its nature, 
coming now to a new life because when he was Jacob, he had the natural self expressing itself. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3, among whom also we all had a conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature, by nature, by nature, we were the children of wrath, even as others. And Jacob had that nature of a supplanter. Jacob had that nature of a deceiver. Jacob had that nature of a depraved person. But now, when the name is changed, the nature is changed. And now God has changed our nature. I said he has changed our nature. Second Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us. How many things? How many things has he given you? All things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature. The depraved nature is cancelled, is put out of the way. And the divine nature now comes, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws. Number three here. Number three, the solemn commission towards a company of nations. In Genesis chapter 35, reading from verse 11, Genesis chapter 35, we're looking at verse 11, and God said unto him, I am the God, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful. I didn't hear your amen. You'll be fruitful in your family. You'll be fruitful in your ministry. And then it says, and multiply, you will multiply. In nation and a company of nations shall be of thee and shall come out of thy loins. A nation and company of nations, multitude of nations shall come on thee. The great work the Lord has committed in, into our hands will reach many nations of the world. The gospel we're preaching will reach many nations of the world because it was the promise given to Abraham, to Isaac, and now to Jacob, and to us who are the children of Abraham by faith. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 8, Galatians chapter 3 verse 8, and the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, the pagans, the Gentiles, through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee all nations shall be blessed. In thee shall all nations be blessed. When the gospel comes to them, and when conviction comes to them, and they become converted, and they are now children of God through faith in Christ. That's been fulfilled. All nations being blessed. That's why the Lord has sent us to preach this gospel to every creature. And we're looking at Romans chapter 16. We're reading from verse 25. Romans chapter 16. We're looking at verse 25. Now, to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began in verse 26 it says but now made 
manifest through you, through me, through Paul at that time, and Peter and the rest of the disciples and apostles made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith and it still goes on today the gospel is still being preached today and it is still being made known to all nations for the obedience of faith and i pray god will continue to use you god will continue to use me use us together in bringing this gospel the saving gospel to all our world in jesus name Another opportunity is coming now at this um, global crusade uh, in um, at this month at the end of July at Ikorodio. This is our own. I said, this is our own. All of us, all over Lagos, in every district, in every local government, everywhere, where everybody, the direction everybody is going now is Ikorodio, that alpha location of July Global Crusade. We're excited. I said, we're excited. And our youths, our children, our men, our women, everyone, members of the church, we're going to do whatever it will take to bring the gospel from there and make it reach to all the nations of the world. Millions will hear, multitudes will turn to Christ in Jesus' name. Are you part of this? Are you keen into this? Is the fire burning inside you that now God is making you a fulfillment of the promise He had given to Abraham? The gospel will not die at your doorstep. This July crusade will be real headquarters crusade for all of Lagos, reaching to Nigeria, reaching to Africa, and reaching out to everyone, everywhere in the world, in Jesus' name. I see the fire burning in you. And I see the glory of God coming upon you. Why don't you rise up and raise your voice to the Lord and say, Yes, Lord, I'll be part of this. I am part of this. I will not lag back. I will not slow down. I will do everything it takes to take this gospel to all the nations of the world for the obedience of faith. Rise up, rise up and talk to the Lord. And the Lord will use you, use me, use us together tremendously in Jesus name